Hello Year 12. This video should match up with the lesson that is titled Monohybrid and Dihybrid Inheritance. So in GCSE, you did a topic on inheritance and within that topic, you, you are required to construct some Punnett squares and complete some genetic crosses, also representing uh, the probabilities using ratios and percentages. So this will be a quick recap of that. So what I would suggest that you do is familiarize yourself with some of those terms when you're looking at Punnett squares, such as homozygous, dominant, recessive, heterozygous, allele, gene. So what I am just doing now is giving you an example of how to construct a Punnett square, just to remind you. So in this case, I'm using two parents, mother and father, of course. One will be homozygous dominant, and the other will be homozygous recessive. So typically, we're supposed to represent our mother on the top of the Punnett square, and the father should be to the left of the Punnett square. Now, in this situation, on this example here, I'm using capital A to represent attached earlobe, and lowercase a to represent detached earlobe. Now, if we were to fill out the Punnett square, we should see that because there's homozygous for both of them, and dominant is always expressed compared to recessive, we should see that all of our offspring should have capital A, lowercase a, meaning that they're all heterozygous for their genotype, but for their phenotype, they should all have attached earlobe. So that should mean, in terms of our probabilities now, the percentage of offspring that will have attached earlobes will be a 100, and the ratio of getting a child with attached earlobes will be 1. So, so in our next example, I'm going to now do the mother and the father as both being heterozygous. Heterozygous means that they have different alleles for the same gene. Again, we're using the same rules as before. We're putting our mother at the top and our father on the left-hand side. The notations are the same, but the alleles are the same. Now, if we look at our offspring now, we can see that it's different to our previous example. We're now seeing that one of our offspring is homozygous dominant. One of our offspring is homozygous recessive, and two of our offspring are heterozygous. But in terms of our phenotype, attached earlobes to detached earlobes, the ratio is going to be three to one. Because there is a total of four, the ratio will be three to one. Three of our offspring will have attached earlobes of their phenotype, and one of our offspring will have detached earlobes of their phenotype. Now, I've written the ratio, but I'm also going to show you what the probabilities would be as a percentage. So if it was three out of four, that would be a probability as a percentage of 75%. So of course, if it's one out of four, that will be 25%. So now, what we need to understand is what is dihybrid inheritance? Now, when you're looking at monohybrid inheritance, that's supposed to represent one allele, one gene that you're looking at. But this time, it is two genes. Now, it's important to remember when you looked at the process of meiosis, that crossing over occurs, and that creates variation. Now, through this crossing over, you're going to get portion of a chromosome which are swapping. Now, of course, that must mean that there are many genes that will be swapped together when this crossing over occurs. So this is why we are going to be looking at dihybrid inheritance, because some genes can come together, appear together. And the perfect example is what we're going to look at now. Mendel and his pea plant. So what he noticed is that he was getting a variety of different phenotypes for his pea plant. He was getting some with a round shape, some with a wrinkled shape, some with a yellow color, some with a green color. So you can now figure out by looking at those different possibilities, 
there are four potential phenotypes that you can get. You can get wrinkled yellow, you can get wrinkled green, you can get round yellow, and you can get round green. So what Mendel did, first of all, is he took two pea plants, one pea plant that had a round yellow shape, a round uh, yellow color, and one that had a wrinkled shape and a green color. And he crossed them. So I'm showing you the genetic cross right now. Now, those are the parents. So we're showing it with the parental genotype at the top. Underneath that now, I'm going to write down what are the gametes that you can get from these parents. Now, if we take the first pea plant, because it's all homozygous dominant, we can only get capital R, capital G. That's the only gamete that we can get from that parent. Likewise, for the other pea plant, the only genotype that we can get gamete-wise would be lowercase r and lowercase g. So, if we're looking at the offspring now, what would the offspring be? Now, the offspring that we're going to, we're going to de denote this offspring as F1. F1 means filial generation, the first filial generation, because we're going to be looking at multiple in this, in this case here. So, we could write down RG, that's what I've written here, but that is wrong, because we're looking at dihybrid inheritance now. So, we've got to remember that the letters that are the same need to be written together. So we need to have our R's together and we need to have our G's together. So now I've written the correct F1 genotype that is capital R lowercase r, capital G lowercase g. And if we look at the, geno the phenotype from there, it would be round and yellow for our phenotype for all of those pea plants. If all of the offspring from this cross are round yellow, how can you then get these different phenotypes that you were seeing? So, what Mendel did now in his next experiment is he took two of those F1P offspring. So, they should have the same genotype. They should have capital R lowercase r, capital G lowercase g. And what he did is that he crossed those. So what I'm going to do is I'm doing the same thing that I did before. But this time, instead of writing parental genotype, I'm writing F1 genotype. So what are the genotypes of those in the first filial generation? And those should be the same as what you can see on the left. Then I'm going to be writing what are the F1 gametes. So what gametes could you potentially get from each of those parents? So if we look at one of those parents, you can get capital R, capital G. You can get capital R, lowercase g. You can get lowercase r, capital G. And you can get lowercase r, lowercase g. Now, of course, that should mean that the gamete coming from the other pea plant should be the same because the genotype is exactly the same. So, let's write out our cross for the gamete and then we can start constructing. So, writing the gametes out, I should eventually end up with both of them being the same so we can start crossing them. Now, it can get very, very complicated if we're doing a Punnett square. So I'm going to show you how I'm doing it. So I'm writing each of the gametes on the sides, and I'm writing them in the same position relative to each other. So the first one would be the dominant, both dominant, and towards the end would be both recessive. Now you can see clearly what I'm doing, just like I said before. We're keeping the same letters together. So there should be no nowhere in this Punnett square me writing R and then a G right after it. 
it should be the R together and the G's together. Now, what you can notice straight away is that one of the offspring has got lowercase for everything. So it's completely homozygous recessive. So now what we're doing is I'm going to write the ratio on the side. So I'm noting down which ones are round, because I can see at least one capital R, and which one from there is going to be yellow with at least one capital G. And it should come out to nine of them having a round yellow shape. I already note, noted down that there's one of them that's going to be wrinkled green. So now we need to look at the rest of them. So now I'm looking for ones that have at least one R and both are lowercase g, and that should come out to three. And which ones have lowercase r together and at least one capital G. And that should also be three. So that should leave us with our ratio being nine to three to three to one. And if you have that F1 genotype crossed with the same same genotype, you should always get that outcome. So for this exam question, you can see how they've written it out. And that's most of the time that's going to be how they, the exam question is going to be written out for this type of question when you're trying to do dihybrid inheritance. It will be also for other types of inherit, uh, inheritance which we will look at soon. So they've already called you the parental phenotypes and genotypes. So what you need to first off do is find the gametes. So it needs to be one B and one E together. So what are the various combinations that you could get? It should be four for the black male. And because it's homozygous recessive for the yellow female, it should only be lowercase b and lowercase e. So if we're looking for the offspring genotypes now, we need to cross each one. So we should come up with capital B, lowercase b, capital E, lowercase e. So we tick them off when we do it. The next one should be capital B, lowercase b, and it should be lowercase e, lowercase e. Next one should then be lowercase b, lowercase b, capital E, capital E. And then the last one should be lowercase b, lowercase b, lowercase e, lowercase e. So all of our gametes have been crossed, so we get four different genotypes for our offspring. Now we need to think about what are the offspring phenotypes. Now, if you go back to the question, it gives you a little table, and the table tells you the genotypes and what the matching phenotypes are. So go back to the table and look and find that genotype. And you should realize that the first one should be for black. The second one should be for yellow. The third one should be for chocolate. And the fourth one is the same as the parental genotype for yellow female. So that should also mean that the phenotype should be yellow. Now, if we do the ratio for these offspring phenotypes, you can see that we've got three different offspring phenotypes. So that should mean that we have a ratio, one for black, two for yellow, and one for chocolate. Meaning our ratio is one to two to one. Now, this question is worth three marks. So for you to pick up one mark, you need to get all the gametes correct. You need to pick up the second mark. You need to get all the offspring genotypes correct. And for you to get the third mark, you need to get the ratio correct. So you don't get awarded a mark strictly for the offspring phenotypes. It needs to be one for all gametes correct, one for the offspring genotypes correct, and one for the ratio being correct.